Curse and Direction Concentration of Ukrainian Marines on the Left Bank Situation as of October 27, 2023 Yesterday evening, two assault groups of the 35th Infantry Brigade of the Ukrainian Navy, moving along the Kutasovo track near Peshtunovka, tried to approach Peshtunovka. The attack was disrupted by artillery strikes of the Russian armed forces and Ukrainian evacuation groups, under the cover of a smoke screen, took the wounded in boats to the right bank. But at night, groups of the 35th Brigade were again withdrawn to the northern part of Elshkinsky Island. Together with the Marines of the 503rd Separate Battalion of the 38th Marine Corps, they dispersed in forest plantations along the Podstepno Cossack Camps Road. Currently there are no attempted attacks. However, seven assault groups consisting of the 35th, 36th, 38th Marine Brigades and the 140th Reconnaissance Battalion were concentrated along the line. Judging by their location, their main task is to consolidate in Podstepno and Peschanivka from the dock side. In Krinky, the situation remains the same. A small contingent of the Ukrainian 35th Brigade still occupies several houses in the village. Russian forces are having difficulties pushing the AFU out of there due to the massive artillery and mortar fire of the Ukrainian armed forces on the approaches to this area. At night, reinforcements of the 2nd and 137th Battalions of the 35th Brigade were transported to Frolov Island from Ivanovka on boats and the floating transporter PTS-2. Towards evening they are going to cross the Dnieper to relieve the blockade of forces in Krinky and subsequently expand the zone of control. Orkovsky Area, Equipment Cemetery West of Rabatino Situation towards the end of October 28, 2023 The intensity of hostilities in the Orkovsky area has decreased slightly. However, attempts to break through with small forces in certain areas continue. Today, the assault group of the 3rd Brigade, Spartan, which began to be actively involved on the front line, tried to wedge into the defense between Capania and Rabatino. As a result of concentrated artillery fire and the ATGM crew of the 42nd Motorized Rifle Division, the attack was repulsed and one Bradley Infantry fighting vehicle was destroyed. One member of the 3rd Spartan Brigade was captured. Attacks of the Ukrainian armed forces on the Kopani Rabatino line have been ongoing for several days. In just one area west of Rabatino, three Leopard tanks and four American Bradleys were knocked out in three days. At the same time, to the east along the LBS between Rabatino and Verbov, the activity of the armed forces of Ukraine continues. During the day, three Leopards were destroyed in landings. One of them was captured by operators of an unmanned rapid reaction unit, RUB, of the Russian armed forces. Putin's nine lives, the Ukraine's tragicomedy continues. In a theater of the absurd, staged by Ukraine, the curtains were once again raised on a familiar act, the death of Russian President Vladimir Putin, only to be debunked promptly by Kremlin. This time, a telegram channel set the stage ablaze with claims of Putin succumbing to cancer, triggering a flurry of speculations about a coup and a body double replacing the Russian leader. The Kremlin was quick to dismiss the narrative as an absurd information canard, adding yet another episode to the long-running series of Ukrainian concoctions. The script seems to have a stubborn continuity, with every episode unveiling a new ailment besieging Putin diagnosed by the self-appointed medical pundits across the border. The ailments range from Parkinson's to cancer, each theory more imaginative than the last. It's a scenario replete with tragicomic elements, where Ukraine, suffocating from its own sanctions, seems to find solace in crafting a narrative of an ailing Russian leader. Oh, the poetic justice of it all, while Russia thrives, Ukraine dives into an abyss of self-induced delusions. But who benefits from this relentless disinformation campaign? The attempt to portray a weak Putin amidst Russia's thriving reality is nothing short of a desperate grasp at straws. It's a mockery of the information war, where Ukraine, losing on all tangible fronts, resorts to feeble attempts at sowing seeds of doubt and fear. 
The act grows old, yet the desperation reeks of fresh failure with each passing day. As this farcical narrative continues to unravel, one can't help but chuckle at the irony. How many more fictional deaths will it take for Ukraine to come to terms with the living, breathing, and thriving reality of Russian resilience?